Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com, and this is part four of our BDD with Selenium and SpecFlow video series. And in this part, we are going to implement our test with POM in BDD with Selenium and SpecFlow. So in the last part, which is nothing but our part three, we wrote a simple test using feature files, step definitions, and also with Selenium. So that was a plain test, and it was a very very simple test as well. And we didn't use a lot of object there, and hence the test was not very complex, and there was no need for writing a page object model for them. But here we're going to discuss implementing the test using page object model in BDD with Selenium and SpecFlow. One of the most important concept in Selenium is POM. So we have a lot of discussions on POM concept in our Execute Automation channel. Please watch them before starting to watch this video. So here are some of the links. But if you want, you can always go to YouTube channel, and then you can watch a lot of videos that we got. So let me first navigate to the browser and show you what are the videos that we got on page object model. So this is the Selenium automation with C sharp, and here you can see there is nothing but a page object model in Selenium with C sharp video, and there is also page navigation of POM in Selenium with C sharp. So it is part eight and part nine. So you can watch these videos. And if you want to get a greater detail on POM, then please go to Selenium Framework and Design Development. And in this playlist, you have something called Page Object Model in Selenium Part Five and Page Object Model in Selenium Part Six. So I would request you to watch these two videos before starting to watch this video, since these videos are going to be the foundation for what we are going to discuss in our discussion right now. So let me first flip to Visual Studio, and we'll start working from there. And you can understand what I'm really talking about. So this is the same project which we worked in our last part of this video series. So I'm going to just close this project, and I'm going to create a new project. So we're going to write a test for our Execute Automation dummy website. So we have a website, as you already know. If you don't know, please. Go to this URL, executeautomation.com/demosite/login.html. Remember, capital L, right? So this will take me up to my test website, and here there is a username and password, and you can type any username and password here, or you can also leave this. But right now, I'm just going to type username and password as admin and admin, and if you hit login, this will take me up to the user form page. So this is the user form page, right? And here, you have different kinds of controls. So we use this site prevalently for automating Selenium applications in different playlist of our channel. And in this video, we are going to use the same website for performing the rest of operations. We are going to use this site for our page object model concept demonstration as well as page navigation demonstration in next video of this video series. Great. So. We're going to use this website right now, so this is what we're going to talk about. So I'm just going to minimize this browser. So let's first create a test project, so unit test project, and let's call this as EA test project. All right, and I'm going to hit OK there. So this is going to create me up a new project. Great. So as usual, first delete this unit test project and just start to add the references for your specflow chrome driver as well as base class dot contrib dot selenium so specflow dot assist so this will bring me up my specflow dot assist so this will of course install this specflow as well great and then let's see it's really installed the specflow Okay, specflow is installed, and then a base class dot contrib. All right, so let's install this as well. Great, and then we need to add our Chrome driver. All right, so install this. Okay, the Chrome driver is added. 
so all the environment setup is done so I'm gonna close this guy and uh, let's first add our first feature file so I'm going to write a feature file for our login page first and then I'm going to write a feature file for our EA page so first let's add a folder just the best practice to have all the feature files in a separate folder and uh, let's call this as feature and then let's add one more folder and let's call this as steps and then add one more folder which is going to have all our pages since we're going to use page object models okay so pages is added so in the feature we're going to add our first feature file so specflow dot specflow feature files so here let's call this as login dot feature great all right so it has added some dummy text for us so i'm just going to get rid of this all right let's save this so i have already written some code for this for the sake of time i just written this code already so i'm just going to copy this feature and i'm going to paste it right here right and this feature file if i could explain it, it's very very simple the feature is login and it says test the login functionality of the application will verify if the username and password combinations are as expected so it's a regression test and the browser we're going to use is chrome and we're going to use scenario outline here rather the scenario which we used in our last part of the video series so scenario outline as you already know this is going to hold a different iteration of test that you're going to perform so if you really don't know what scenario outline is don't hesitate to watch the video again go to your BDD and specflow playlist of the video series and there you have something called specflow scenarios and scenario outlines so part 6 and part 8 will give you a complete detail of what specflow scenario and specflow scenario outline is all about right great so what it says is verify if the login functionality is working so this is just a positive case and I'm writing given I have navigated to my application and I typed the username and password so this username and password is going to be there in my examples so when I click login button then I should see the EA page so once I hit the login button I should navigate to my EA page this guy right great so the next thing we need to do is to add the steps for these feature files so for that I'm just going to add a new class file and I'm going to call this guy as login steps. Great. So for the sake of time, I have already written the code for this as well. So let me just copy this code. And I'm going to paste it. Great. And of course, as usual, we need to add the bindings. And just add the reference for that. And also for the iWeb driver. And there is something called as login page. So what is this login page suddenly? It's nothing but the page which we need to create. So this page is what is going to hold all the object for our login page. So I'm going to create a class file called login page dot cs. And this guy will hold all my objects of login page. These objects, the username, password, and login button. And also I have written method to perform the login operations. So go to the login page.cs and here is my code. So I'm just going to copy this guy and I'm going to paste it. All right. And then just add these references and also for the iWeb element. Great. And also for the browser. Super. Okay. There is one more thing called EA page. So which is nothing but our next page of the application so once you click this login it take you to the EA page right so we need to create a page object for EA page as well so I'm gonna create this guy as well so just create a class called EA page all right so this page is just a dummy page as of now we'll talk about this in later video of this video series but as of now just create this since you will get rid of the issues at, at least all right so now we have the objects and now and then we have the steps and also we have the feature files so what is this error hmm 
just add this great and this guy and also this guy all right so all the reference has been added right now so now this looks so good and so cool so to explain this let, let's go to the login dot feature and here given I have navigated to the to my application so what it says so let's go to the definition browser.current.navigate.go to URL of the configuration manager dot app setting of selenium based URL so the URL we need to pass so which means I'm going to copy this URL and let's go to the app.config and here is the selenium based URL key so instead of this dummy URL I'm going to paste our website's URL just save this and close the app.config we don't require them anymore and then it sets the browser.current as the current driver or a global variable of this class and then what is the next feature I type the username and password great so I have just used the regular expression for or I typed here the username and password and it has two parameters here so I'm going to use a login method which is created within this particular page object so let's go to the definition and see what is it doing it's just doing a plain send keys see and it's performing the operation of typing in the value there right you can also use the custom methods which we discussed already in creating custom methods using extension methods in selenium with c sharp so again if you want to go back and see that video then just go to the selenium automation with c sharp and here is the extension methods for custom methods and it is an advanced concept since we are using extension methods so we can also use this concepts to create our own custom methods and then we can hook this method to our iweb element type great so I'm going to just minimize this we'll probably use this as well and then what is the next step so when I click the login button let's go to the step definition and it just called the method click login so let's go to this method it says btn login dot submit and it returns me the EA page as you already know once you type username and password once you hit the login button it will take you to the EA page so you need to somehow return the EA page that is the concept of page navigation in page object model right so you need to do that as well right great so once everything is done we're all good to go so just try to run this and see if this really works we'll take it to the next part of this video series to explain it even more detail on how the whole page object model with page navigation works so but as of now we'll just try to see if this really works or not and then let's go to the login page.cs and see what is the element we have defined so here is the login page object and we have just created a plain page objects like username password and login and there are the methods right super cool and let's go to the test explorer and build this solution and this will bring me up to test the one is verify if the login functionality is working fine positive case on chrome with admin admin do you see that what it is bringing up admin and admin is nothing but this username and password similarly the next test is karthik and karthik right which is nothing but this examples so it is actually scenarios outline and the spec flow is very intelligent enough to bring me up these two tests great so let's first run with the first test and see if this really works so I'm just running the test it should open me up the browser and it should navigate to the page which we have specified in the app.config file all right and it typed the value and it went to the page super cool great the test got passed and we'll see it's performing the operation as expected super so in the next video of this video series we'll talk about the rest of the page it's nothing but the EA page we'll try to see if we can perform the operation in the next page as well so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a very great day